Okay, a quick recap of part one. And if you haven't seen that part yet, there's a link in the video description. So I build a house for tree swallows because they're beneficial and eat lots of insects. These two move in, but before they can start their family, this poison turd shows up and threatens to ruin everything. That's an invasive English sparrow. Tree swallow's good, English sparrow's bad. Made a hard effort to shoo him out, but he just kept coming back, so I had to evict him with extreme so prejudice. Right now. And I remarked at the end of that video that I put up two new houses and they both have been occupied by new families of swallows. But that was actually an error by me. It wasn't new families of swallows. It was the same two swallows now trying to occupy every house. And with that new bit of information, as well as a whole bunch more, we move into part two. So it turns out that tree swallows are actually quite territorial. If you have two houses close to one another, the pair will only use one house, but refuse to let any other swallows use the other house. They just don't seem to want to have neighbors living that close. So while the adults may visit all three houses, they're actually only going to raise their chicks in one of those three houses. And there is competition. They love these homes. They want to get in there. So <laughs> they can't resist having a peek in the window. But I think it's kind of a general rule across all species lines that if you pop your head in the window to look at someone else's sleeping children, <laughs> it's going to be grounds for an ass kicking. But this extra unused house can be used to your benefit to prevent sparrows from taking over the occupied nest. When a sparrow comes along, he is going to choose the low-hanging fruit. He would much rather just take the open, easy hole than try to do battle to take over a different nest box. Now, the reason this could work in your advantage is that you can set out a trap. So what is a Van Ert Sparrow Trap? Well, it's a really simple little piece of spring-loaded material here that, yep, on the inside like that. Then in here, take this little flap, set the trap. See that? So now, when little Sparrow goes in there, he jumps through the hole, traps it off, he's stuck. Okay, so you got yourself a sparrow. Job ain't done yet though, is it? It's time to take a hard look in the mirror. <laughs> you got a few options. Most of which will require the use of a plastic bag. This needs to go in here, then let the little bugger out, and then you got access to him. And once he's in that bag, there's a lot of options. The easiest for most to stomach, and not so coincidentally also the most tedious, would be to get yourself some carbon dioxide. Maybe you're a welder, a brewmaster, a murdering psychopath. Would you hold still, please? Sir? Or in my case, an overly enthusiastic aquarius. Aquarius? Aquarius? Someone who keeps aquariums. You keep Mr. Sparrow right in there. You can even leave him in the box if you want to. Take the hose in, fill her up. He'll conk out and never wake up within a few minutes. Remember that scene from uh, Apollo 13 when they had that problem? Yeah, Houston, this is Aquarius. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Jim, uh, could you check your CO2 gauge for us? Remember that when they were suffocating because they couldn't scrub out the CO2 and they were all going to pass out and go away, just kind of kind of conk out and die quietly? Well, that's what'll happen to them. But now, not everyone has a giant CO2 container in their house. So I'm afraid for you, you got to get your hands dirty. So you gotta let him out of the box. You could use him as a stress ball. Give him the old Nolan Ryan against the side of a house. But if you wanna avoid all of this, you can go right ahead and just make yourself a nice sparrow martini. And there we are. Shaken, but not stirred. Come on, did you actually think I would shake a sparrow to death on the international platform that is YouTube? It's a beanie baby. His name is Windsor. And so help me God, if I see in the comments someone say, just take it far away and let it go somewhere else. It has w You could clip their flight feathers, turn them back loose. The predators will love you for this. And it's painless to the bird, well, until it gets caught. <laughs> 
All right, I'm getting kind of dark. <laughs> Let's get back to the to the story. Now it's important not to set this trap up and walk away from it because it's possible that a beneficial bird could go into the house, get caught, and the stress of being in there actually can kill them quite quickly. The next strategy to employ is if you have a wetland in the area, place the houses close to the wetland. The reason for this is red-winged blackbirds frequently inhabit wetlands and they are known to be hyper aggressive. <laughs> These things will attack anything and everything. They fight with each other over nesting territory. Fight with other birds over food resources. They just fight and fight and fight. <laughs> it's like a wolverine of birds. When they're really pissed off, they fluffed up these shoulders on them so that everything in the area can see just two bright red beams. Humans have a similar posture. It looks like this. What do you want to do, huh? What do you want to do? But they don't limit their aggression to only large birds. They also chase away the house sparrows. They hate them. I watched them several times, was never able to capture on camera. But I can tell you that when house sparrows land anywhere in the vicinity of the nests of the red-winged blackbird, they're quickly chased off. I did manage to bait them a little bit with some starling decoys I had. I snuck in with the decoys behind me so that the red-winged blackbird couldn't see that I was actually the one putting them there. And immediately after walking off, he came and checked it out. And the decoys didn't fool him once he hit the ground, but it was enough to bring him in. And if those would have been real starlings, he absolutely would have attacked them. Now, the previous two or three years when I tried to raise the swallows here, the red-winged blackbirds weren't quite as aggressive. Wisconsin has had two very rainy seasons. And the property value of this wetland has increased a ton. So you have more birds, more aggression, and more protection for the swallows. And you may ask, why don't the swallows red-winged blackbirds fight? Well, they kind of do a little bit. <laughs> Here's a swallow letting a red-winged blackbird know that sitting on top of his house, eh, find somewhere else to sit. But because their food and their flying style and their nesting habitats are so different, they both can exist in the same area. But if both these strategies, trapping and placing them close to Red Wings, fail you, there is always Plan B. And on this day, the only rifle that I had sighted in at 50 yards was my 30 caliber. <laughs> so, a bit overkill for house sparrows? Yeah, of course. Now one last thing, before you go pulling trigger, you really need to make sure that you're killing the right bird. Many native sparrows look very similar to house sparrows. The red-winged blackbird female looks very similar to house sparrows. Make sure you're targeting the right bird. In my area, there are several song sparrows. There's house finches, chipping sparrows. They're sometimes not the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> Here's one that came into my garage, tried to eat the peanut butter out of a mouse trap. Hang on, dude. I'll let you go. Ready to go? There you go. So that's the end of part two. I hope it gave you some food for thought to how to keep your own house sparrows. House sparrows. <laughs> Tree swallows doing well. There are links to every piece of equipment I've used, including the birdhouses, the traps, etc., all down in the video description. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay vigilant.